Good afternoon. Hello, fake Facebook friends. I opened up the, the program a couple of minutes early because I want to make sure the sound is okay today. I'm out here at the end of the McCoy Trail, the North McCoy Trail, along what we call the East-West Channel, and uh, we have a, quite a few helicopters flying around, those Navy helicopters. They are pilots practicing their flight time, their touchdown, the takeoff. So they're very active in this particular location. And uh, the wind isn't too bad this morning, or this afternoon, it's noon now. Uh, but sometimes the sound, the microphone, doesn't always pick up well. So if anyone that is watching would like to give me some feedback on the sound, I appreciate it. Got a couple of people in the audience right now. We did sign on a couple minutes early to kind of work out some of those technical kinks. You can see a th thumbs up. So feel free in the uh, comment section to always shoot a thumbs up or ask a question. Oh, great, loud and clear, awesome. I'd love to see that. <laughs> uh, that's always, the, the technical side of these uh, live streams is just, uh, uh, thank you. Right, uh, yep, you can still hear helicopters, but you can still hear, I think. Okay, yeah. Uh, hopefully the, this microphone usually, when it's working right, does do a good job of picking up my voice and not so much the helicopters, but I am almost directly underneath them. Standing here at the end of the North McCoy Trail, off trail, uh, along what we call the East-West Channel. Hello from, from, hello to you in New York City. My, uh, this is, uh, my name is Maria. I'm an education specialist here at the Tijuana River National Estuarine Research Reserve, or the Tijuana Estuary for short. And I've been bringing Lunchtime Live to you since uh, April or so, uh, Tuesdays at noon, uh, in lieu of in-person uh, nature walks and, 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 and uh, our regular programming. And it's been real fun, and today, uh, we are out here on this beautiful day. It's um, uh, probably in the mid 60s. Very, you can see the water, it's very glassy, so we don't have a lot of wind with us today, which is great. And uh, uh, it's a great setting to um, dive right into, hi Mark, right into our species for today, which is the. Uh, <laughs> The, the flying torpedoes, or the what we call the striped mullet, the striped mullet. And um, if you know what a mullet is, uh, and, I, and I don't mean the hairstyle, <laughs> uh, that isn't very popular anymore, uh, but once was, it is the, the fish, the fish, the striped mullet. Okay. And, uh, and so, you know, being that it's a fish, we, uh, we, we don't have the opportunity to have a live specimen with us today. Uh, so we'll be using some photos and this beautiful backdrop and maybe we'll just get lucky enough and see one of the jumping mullet come out of the, come out of the, uh, the, the channel behind us. Uh, and and um, uh, so let's finger, cross our fingers for that. So the striped mullet uh, or Mugil cephalus Mugil cephalus, or striped mullet, as we like to call it. Um, it's called in this area. It's also called the flathead mullet, I believe the gray mullet. And this is a, f f no macro lens today, sorry. Yeah, um, <clears throat> but um, I guess I could have used the macro on the photo. We're not gonna get quite that close uh, to, the, to the striped mullet or get that in depth with the, the striped mullet. Uh, the striped mullet is a fish uh, you know, native to this area, but really around the world. And around the world, found in coastal waters, in tropical, subtropical, temperate uh, waters, 
in estuaries and lagoon mouths, in river mouths, uh, and in, in, in and in the open, uh, not open, but in the in the coastal waters of the large uh, seas, but in those kind of temperate regions. Okay, uh, this is a fish that um, you may have seen before because it's very common. I mean, it's found worldwide in those conditions. Um, rather large, very not very um, kind of an average looking, meaning that uh, we don't see a lot of. Um, um, I don't know, maybe uh, it's, it's a very sort of average looking fish in that it is silvery in color, very silvery in color, very torpedo like shape, thick torpedo like shape, so rather long. You see that forked tail, the way you might draw a fish's tail if asked to draw a fish, um, large eye large eye, a couple of dorsal fins so along the back there, um, very small mouth and this is a, a, not a great photo, uh, um, <clears throat> but a very small mouth, you know, right at the terminal end of the, of the front of the head there, and this kind of little pattern, a stripey pattern in there. So how many of you, uh, okay, I'm going to what birds like to eat them. Get, I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, how many of you have seen a striped mullet? So feel free and, and either uh, if you're here uh, participating in live or later, if you're watching this later, uh, sh you know, feel free to comment, answer questions, or if you come up with questions, feel free to, 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 to type them in there. How many of you have seen a striped mullet? Seen a striped mullet? How would you see them? How many? Would, how would you see them? Okay, Mark has seen one. And how did you see it, Mark? Okay. Yeah, they. Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm allowing for. There's always a, a little bit of a delay, so I'm, I'm waiting for, uh, uh, for anyone to share with me okay so you saw one uh, maybe you've seen them because they do a jump out of the water right, okay so mark saw it jumping out of the water uh jumping today underneath an egret oh okay great and sometimes if you are standing in a place like a pier the end of a pier on the edge of a pier or um, over um, we have a, a bridge over uh, a channel here uh, you may actually see them swimming in the water okay uh, swimming in the water but um, <clears throat> because they are relatively large but and they and they do jump and we'll get into that in a minute so this is a large fish a very kind of average looking and when I say large the average size of a striped mullet is about mm, one and a half feet. One and a half feet. Okay, you've seen them in Mission Bay. Okay, yes. So Mission Bay, you would see them. San Diego Bay, uh, along the shore, uh, in any of the estuaries and lagoons, and and in California, they'll range all the way up to San Francisco Bay. Um, but again, they typically don't like water that's less than about sixty degrees. Okay, so more of the, on the subtropical temperate uh, zone, but also warmer. So they've been found in tropical areas as well. Okay. Um, and uh, so they, 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 the average size is about, oh, like I said, about a foot and a half. Uh, however, I mean, the largest one was uh, measured at three feet. Okay, now you're going to take that with a, a grain of salt. Um, uh, but I, I've read that uh, they, they can get pretty big. But the average is about a foot and a half, and that's really when, what you see. They, they live to be about, hi Donna, I saw your, saw your comment there. They live to be about five years old, okay? reaching maturity around two or three years. So five years, pretty good amount of time, pretty, pretty long life there uh, again. When I looked up the oldest, uh, the oldest fish, a striped mullet, I got somewhere between 13 and 15 years. Okay, that's a, a pretty long time. I couldn't find a hard number, but the average again is about five. 
Okay, and maturity, they reach maturity around two or three, and two or three years, and typically they're about a foot at that point. Okay, so big fish, okay, big fish. Uh, and what do they eat? I know someone asked a question, what eats them? And we'll get into that, but what do they eat? Well, they're typically bottom feeders. So if you see them, so you often aren't gonna see them feeding. If you're seeing them, that is a long, yep, long time to be a fish. Now, they don't all make it that long. Some of them don't make it very long at all. <laughs> but they, 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 if they are, do make it, uh, they tend to feed on uh, detritus, uh, dead material on the bottom. Yes. Um, the, well, yes, and they, but they, they plankton, okay, they, so they're, um, they, they, they eat that organic matter, bact uh, some bacteria, uh, the microinvertebrates, um, things along the bottom, so they're what we call benthic feeders, okay, um, so they're not, even though they're large, they're not eating, uh, they're not even eating small fish, they're, they're eating kind of more on the microscopic <clears throat> end of things. So when we see them at the surface, they're not feeding. Uh, and if we see them jumping, they're, they're not, they're not, they're not doing it to, to catch food out of the air. Um, we, they're, they're bottom, they're bottom feeders. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. And, um, they, we might, when we see them, um, you might see them schooling. They are a species that likes to school. What do we mean by that? they okay they are almost impossible to catch with fishing gear okay yeah um, I know we'll get into them as, 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 a, as a fishery fish in just a minute but yeah I can imagine because they they move pretty quick they school they school um, uh, together uh, and then they also school when they're spawning and what do we mean by spawning? Well, oh, block the view on that one. Did you guys hear those those willets? We got some willets circling. Ah, uh, there they are. Sorry, interpretive moment here. We've got some willets circling. Um, they're the ones that are kind of a grayish body, but then when they when they fly, you see that distinct white and black pattern. Uh, very, very uh, uh, common this time of year um, here at the estuary, uh, part of the winter migration. Um, <clears throat> so, okay, have they been loving the high tides in the estuary? So, unfortunately, I don't know who, who asked that question, Craig. Craig, it's been challenging. Uh, we aren't here in, working out of the um, facility uh, as much uh, during this, um, this uh, time. In the, in the last couple of months uh, as, as uh, we're kind of going back to a more of a, a stay-at-home order. So I'm only coming in to do things. I'm not getting an opportunity to really spend time here and seeing this. But um, I can imagine uh, with a lot more water and the high tides, and the high tides are a lot more extreme this time of year. By the way, the tide this morning was a little over a seven-foot tide at about 7 a.m. And here we are at noon. Uh, five hours later, and although there is a little bit of lag within the estuary uh, because of the time it takes to get from the river mouth here, you can see it's you see it's still quite a quite a, a full channel today. So yeah, they um, they even the, when at low tide the water is much too shallow for them. So they are moving in and out with the tide if they are seen in here. And this is probably the closest location to the visitor center where you would see one jumping out of the water, okay? Um, because it does get deep enough here uh, for them and the water does um, uh, fill up at the, at the highest tides. So, 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 when they're, so when they're spawning, uh, which again, it really depends uh, the time of year, I is, and it has to do with uh, the temperature of the water because these are found all over the world. It's hard to say when exactly 
uh, they are they're not all going to be spawning at the exact same time but again it's it's uh, uh, kind of temperature driven but uh, the female lay will lay anywhere from you know half a million to a couple of million of e uh, eggs okay uh, um, and uh, then the the you know the, the males will fertilize those and once fertilized it's only about 48 hours 48 hours until they hatch so a very quick incubation that occurs now now all those eggs become do all those eggs become an adult mature striped mullet most often no uh, uh, the purpose of, of that many uh, producing that many eggs is that then the um, those eggs are also food for other aquatic species so those eggs most of those will become food and it's a good thing if there were that many uh, eggs that survived to adulthood to adulthood the water our waterways <laughs> would be crammed with, stri with striped mullet dominating uh, 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 the dominating those coastal areas so we um, so so uh, they uh, uh, most of them are eaten but those that survive go through that cycle um, where they're they live on the average up to about five years okay and um, they become food as well they besides as an as an adult they become food food as well uh, but when we see them jumping and uh, when we see them jumping um, for those of you who have seen them before you really get the full view of the fish when that occurs and I apologize for my again lack of resources right now not being able to be in the office we see them sort of jumping not sort of straight up but more in a horizontal fashion okay so maybe this is how you would have seen them jumping you get the full view of that shape okay and why do they do that why do the, the mullet jump and when they jump it's not a long distance uh, it's a they're a big fish uh, they're not like flying fish which would go for a really long time if you've seen those uh, i've seen that you have the pleasure of seeing those and it's it's really amazing these guys are more like a big jump and then kind of a flop okay so what would some theories be what are some guesses on why this the mullet jump out of the water why do we do that we don't see that with a lot of the other fish local fish why are they jumping out of the water I'll wait a minute or two so if you're just if you're just tuning in we're talking about the striped mullet mugle cephalus and why it jumps out of the water locally the striped mullet sometimes called the flathead mullet the gray mullet why do they jump what would be a guess well a lot of fish a lot of fish will playing I spy okay uh, is it a breathing thing okay so good guesses there very good guesses uh, being chased yes so uh, low do okay so being chased uh, so a lot of fish do jump when being chased by by a predator okay so that that could be a reason especially if they are off sh offshore or uh, you know out, out out of the estuary where we would have some larger uh, aquatic predators chasing them here in the, in the in the calm waters of the channel it might not it might not be it wouldn't seem to be a reason for them to be jumping out of here because they're one of the larger uh, fish uh, in in the um, in, in these channels uh, you might have some smooth hound sharks but but they're not interested in, in these uh, but um, but if they're in the bay or uh, you know maybe maybe a, a sea lion or um, <clears throat> um, uh, uh, would be would be going after them um, do they do it for fun 
they don't really know. So there's no real um, definitive answer why they do it. Do they do it just because they can? Do they do it to see? Um, do they do it to get more oxygen? Uh, and and um, it is, they do have a, um, uh, the ability to have something in the back of their, of their throat that does allow them to, oops, I gave away my next photo. <laughs> it does allow them to breathe uh, from, straight from the air, not through their gills. So uh, it could be that when the oxygen is low in, in, uh, due to warmer water or a lower tide um, or a lot of uh, sediment in, in the water, they may be jumping to get some extra oxygen. Okay? Um, uh, and they may be doing it to, there's some thought that they're doing it to get parasites off of them. Okay? Get parasites off of them. The catching insects, I would think, uh, is, is a good guess. I, I, I couldn't find any, any even suggestions of that. It was uh, more that possibly parasites, um, the, you know, trying to get parasites off them or getting more oxygen or being chased by a predator. So, um, and maybe it's, maybe it could be just cause, <laughs> just because, but it is pretty, pretty exciting. And when you do see them, it's typically just one, not the whole school, um, at least in the calm waters of the estuary. So I wouldn't think that it would be a predator in here. Yeah. Okay, DO equals dissolved oxygen. Yes, it does. So yeah, low dissolved oxygen might be a reason for them. Okay. Now, again, so this is, this is a, a fish that, um, it, like I said, it's, it's, it's widespread globally. It is um, commercial, commercially, it's become quite uh, important. Uh, it is, I, I, found, um, I found some numbers from the, um, the Food and Agriculture Organization uh, that have been tracking uh, mullet as a fishery, you know, as an aquaculture, as well as a fish, uh, you know, being fished um, uh, since the 1950s. And it's interesting, in the, in the, in the, starting in the 1950s till about the 1990s, they were relatively flat numbers of, of, of mullet being fished. Uh, worldwide, but then in the mid 1990s, those numbers really went up um, and started to increase. And same with the aquaculture, although it was a little more of a steadily incline from 1950 to the mid 1990s, there was a slight incline that was occurring. But then, uh, in the, again, in the mid 1990s, they it, it really took off as an aquaculture species. So. Uh, predominantly in, in Asian countries, in Venezuela, I believe was one. So it become a very important commercial fish uh, in parts of the world. And uh, yeah, they seem to seem to, to do well. They seem to have a very wide uh, range with salinity. So if salinity is changing, they're found in fresh water all the way up to, I read 75 parts per thousand uh, salinity. I mean, it's been pretty extreme, but maybe so. They are found in the salt sea. They're introduced there, okay. um, <clears throat> and then, <laughs> okay, I'm impressed, but a, a potential mate, and that could be, yeah, I'm the fit, look how strong I am, look how far I can jump. <laughs> I love these answers, I love these comments, and um, uh, so, so, and again, they are in, a, in a, a wide range of temperatures as well, but you know, typically not less than 60 degrees, but up to fairly, pretty warm waters as well. So they seem to be fairly hardy. Uh, making them abundant and a great source for food as as populations increase and uh, Maybe it is hard to fish them. I'm their fishing strategies I, I didn't get too much into learning how the fishery side of them, but I would guess you know net fishing Maybe not a lot of line fishing with these guys since they are relatively um, seem pretty active, but uh, uh, but then uh, uh, They also are eaten um, and they are also eaten uh, 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 by uh, by natural, meaning uh, non-human. When I say natural, I mean non-human um, predators. For example, and I just want to share this one last photo with you. Uh, and, and 
this is another way you may have seen a striped mullet. Uh, you may have uh, not, not ever seen one uh, under the water from, from a high vantage. You may never have seen one jumping out of the water, but you may have seen one being held in the talons of this beautiful osprey raptors. Yeah, and, and osprey in particular. This, the osprey, for many of you uh, that might be birders, it's a relatively common raptor on the coast uh, to uh, observe. Um, and it is in many ways like the bald eagle of the coast here, where it is predominantly getting, uh, dines on fish. And the striped mullet, makes an excellent meal for the osprey. So the hot osprey in a successful capture may be seen flying over and we see this all the time. We have osprey nests around Imperial Beach at the ballpark and people's yards along the Silver Strand and so these these osprey will capture them right out of the water, not necessarily when they're jumping, maybe when they're, they see them when they're close to the surface, uh, be able to grab them and then fly them back to their nest. Yeah, thanks. I, I, I got this from a, a co-worker. I can't take credit for it. Um, and I'm not sure exactly where she got this either, but, uh, but this is not an uncommon sight. You may have seen this before, and if you didn't even know, you were looking at a striped mullet. And I would probably say maybe nine ten times out of ten, if it's a large fish in the in the in the talons of a of an osprey clutched, it's probably the striped mullet. So, um, and uh, you know, everybody's somebody's lunch around here <laughs> and, and on this on this on this planet of ours. So everybody's got to eat. And uh, for the osprey, the striped mullet is uh, a pretty good score. So, how can the osprey see mullet in the water when it's marking? Yeah, that's a great question. And, um, uh, you know, raptors have a really excellent eyesight, which allows them to see from, from above. Uh, the water is often fairly clear, so maybe if the water is murky, the osprey doesn't choose that area to hunt. Um, it, and sometimes the water looks really murky to us, uh, but maybe from above it's a bit more clear with the sun shining down on it. It's sometimes tough for us at, at um, when we're at the level of the water to really notice how clear or, or, um, or murky it, it is. Uh, so great questions. So anyway, there you go. The, the, the flying torpedo, the jumping torpedoes. <laughs> And I say torpedo because that is really often how they are described in shape is the, and the silveriness of them. It's just a, a, a torpedo really sort of says it all when you look at, the, at how they are, how they look. Uh, so again, great questions, great comments. You guys are funny. Uh, and birds see differently. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I can imagine that they do. And, and some of them are fly so high and can see so far. Oh, a few more willets out there. It really is a beautiful day. I wish I could be sharing this with you in person, but we'll get there. So everyone, please stay safe. Uh, that six foot social distance is, is, is really important to remember. Masks and you know, if it's if it's if it's available to you to go to, to come here or be somewhere local, um, what is my name? You can always shoot me a comment. Again, my name is Maria and I'm an education specialist and research assistant here. Please feel free. I, I go back and I read the comments. So um, answer any questions. You can find me um, uh, on our T1SU website with my full email address. And uh, if you have any any suggestions uh, or comments about the sh about the show? I appreciate them there as well. But always in the comments of the live streams, we'll we read those. So thank you all so much. Have a really wonderful day. Appreciate the feedback. It feels so good to be out here. I have to say, and, I, and uh, so I, I encourage you in a safe manner to get out, enjoy your local 
nature and um, uh, and uh, we gotta soak up the sun uh, and and stay healthy. So have a great have a great rest of the day. I'll see you guys next week for lunchtime live. Take care, everyone.